With this video, I continue presentation uh, of information about social insects, and we will talk about mystery of longevity. Uh, and today's video about ants. It's really fascinating information for me. It was new; I didn't know uh, these details. But it is again a lot of inf important information for us. If you want, uh, for those who want to live longer. So here are some pictures. And uh, first, I will present uh, abstract. And again, uh, please download the video is relatively long. You can download uh, the presentation as PDF file. The link in the description. And then to get get uh, more information by clicking to the links and to get into the sources. And the abstract is such: development of ants larva to a specific test is controlled by level of nutrition, hormones, and pheromones. Longevity of the ant, uh, adult ants depends on nutrition, of course, uh, first, but, uh, but also on hormones and pheromones. But uh, indeed, adult ants cannot eat uh, solid food. Only the ant larva can chew and process the solids. Adult workers and soldiers feed on fluids collected by workers' foragers. That includes sap from plants, hemolym from other insects, also from hemolym from a larva, and uh, some fluids from eggs. Upon uh, returning to the nest, the foragers uh, regurgate re 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 a portion of the fluid and pass it on to other ants. The queen in, in the developed country, uh, pardon, in the, in, in the developed colony, feeds exclusively on larva hemolymph of all babies and may live uh, for over a decade. So you see, even if they have uh, uh, fluid uh, larva or eggs from uh, other insects, they prefer to feed exclusively on the larval hemolymph for of own babies. This is strange and very interesting. Okay, let's go into details. The global numbers of ants have been estimated as between 1 and 10 million billion, so it is 10 in power 15, 10 in power 16 of individual insects and surely a part of this success is based on a division of labor or caste system in ants' colonies. Morphology, longevity and behavior of ants differ profoundly between the castes. A small number of individuals of the colony, namely the queens, live for decades and reproduce while other ant, uh, adult ants live shorter than a year, but they construct, maintain and defend the nest, collect and share food, rear the brood, the larva. Only a small number of workers leave the nest for foraging. A soldier can have 100 times the body mass of a minor worker, which is like minima, a name minima. And development of larva towards a certain caste is mediated by epigenetics, that is by environment, food, hormones, and pheromones. Epigenetics refer to gene expression in the DNA sequence. An obvious example of epigenetics is cellular differentiation in the development of multicellular organisms. Despite the enormous diversity in cell uh, types of, of, in an individual animal, these cells are essentially clones and all share the same genes. Okay, again, our body consists of many, many uh, cells and every cell it is just a clone of, uh, other, of some uh, previous uh, cell. And, uh, and egg, which we got from mother and uh, fertilized by sperm. Okay, but yet again, uh, we are, uh, the cell types are so different, and this is a result of epigenetics. epigenetics. No change of the, of the genetic uh, is necessary, but epigenetics. So expression or suppression of the genes. So see, uh, here we see how the same uh, I mean, uh, uh, genetically uh, the, uh, equivalent, the genetically identical, uh, ants, how they develop. There are very small minima uh, working bees, working uh, ants. There are worker uh, forager, which is collect uh, uh, the food outside, and there are soldier, soldiers with huge uh, head, and uh, the, its its role it is to protect the nest. Here we see even more uh, different castes. It is in Texas leaf cutter. Uh, we see the, the queen, we have the, the king or the drone, and we have so many different size uh, ants from minima, from very small size, to the soldier. 
One mechanism of the gene expression is DNA methylation, the covalent attachment of the methyl group to a cytosine uh, nucleotide. Research on ants and honeybees points to DNA methylation as a crucial, crucial factor in determining the cost of the developing individual larva. So, sirtuin, sirtuins, a family of nicotine adenine, adenine uh, denucleotide uh, dependent enzymes, uh, so it is sirtuins are proteins and so the enzymes, and they are involved in the cell metabolism and can regulate many cellular functions, including DNA repair inflammatory response, cell cycle, or apoptosis, apoptosis of the cell. Of the seven uh, identified sirtuins, uh, uh, sirtuin 1 and 2 orchestrate acquisition of DNA methylation. So how methylation is going? We have a uh, cytosine here, molecule of cytosine, and aromatic uh, amino acid, and it can be uh, with addition of this methyl group can turn to the methyl cytosine and back. Methylation, demethylation. Two ant species, uh, the Florida carpenter ant and uh, Jordan's uh, jumping ants were investigated in this following presentation in 10 years ago. And these were, uh, two species of ants differ profoundly in the rigidity of the cast structure. Adults of one cast of the carpenter, uh, carpenter ants can never become members of another. Meanwhile, workers of the jumping ants can become, fun, can become functional queens if the, their colony has lost its queen. The authors discovered clear difference uh, in methylation between the ant casts. Also, these uh, differences are less pronounced in the jumping ants. So mechanism of selective methylation is not yet understood. So my, I, I may speculate that environment and food defines the development and future of individual larva and even individual adults. Okay, here the foreign the carpenter ends. Like in adult wasp and bees, and adults, including queens, are limited to liquid diets. Again, bees and wasp even um, they can consume pollen, but uh, the pollen, very small particles of the pollen, uh, which uh, uh, has protein and, and uh, fat, li li lipids, fat, but not so in ants. Ants are more limited. Uh, only the adult uh, insects, uh, adult ants, they consume only liquid food. Because the passageway between the head and abdomen uh, where food is digested is so narrow that solid pieces of food would, wouldn't fit through it. Meanwhile, the ants larvae are able to eat a wider range of food that adult workers, foragers, provide to them, or foragers or uh, the nest workers. Prerog uh, predative ants capture and feed the larva with caterpillars, larva, and eggs of other insects. Okay, so. In some ants species, both queens and female workers can produce so-called trophic unfertilized eggs to feed larva. It is uh, so, so uh, especially so when it is only the beginning of the colony, so the establishing colony. Okay, and the opposite is true when the queen and adult ants in some ant species feed on the larva hemolymph. So it is happening in developed, already established colony. So it is not in the beginning, but in established colony it can happen so. So this uh, method is uh, larval hemolymph feeding. So they are sucking blood from own babies. Here is uh, this picture of the uh, end presented schematically. You see the head and abdomen. Uh, the passage, pass, 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 passageway is so narrow that only a liquid can uh, get through. Here again, uh, we see that narrow constriction at the throat and waist uh, that uh, uh, leads to that here. You see, so tiny. So only uh, only solid uh, so 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 solid particles cannot get through. Cannot get through. Uh, meanwhile, the larva is uh, different. The, uh, its composition is different, and uh, the, the body composition is different, and it can consume solid food and digest it. 
The hemolymph in insects is the major transport medium for the exchange of nutrients, waste products, and signal substances such as hormones between cells. Through chemical composition of the uh, hemolymph, uh, it maintains the proper environment for the cells. He the hemolymph consists of the liquid plasma and the cell hem hemocytes. Uh, plasma sites uh, are the hemocytes responsible for cell ingestion. I mean, it is phagocytosis, is a very big, important part of the immune system. And they represent about 95% of circulating hemocytes. Uh, plasma is usually clear fluid containing higher level of potassium in, in the insects feeding on plants or higher level of sodium otherwise. Okay, you can read more about this uh, hemolymph. And we see that uh, these cells in the hemolymph, we have cells, and uh, most of them they are plasma sites, plasmatocytes, and they are an important part of the immune system to, to digest uh, viruses bacteria and fungi and uh, so they are responsible for phagocytosis but also what is also uh, also happening uh, the, uh, they, uh, this hemolymph uh, can be coagulated and so that in, in case of, of uh, injury it can coagulates and turn to the, some kind of solid solid gel normally the larva can survive moderate loss of hemolymph without any problems for example, while workers are predatory on spider eggs, uh, their queen does not feed directly on uh, this easy prey. It is possible that uh, this uh, uh, liquid, uh, that larva hemolymph feeding uh, function as a filter, providing protection against toxins and parasites. The queen in, in, in the developed colony de depends exclusively on the larva uh, hemolymph feeding and trophic eggs also for her nutrition. But during founding of the company, of the colony, uh, that is with small number, with small population of workers, the queen uh, suppresses this larva uh, hemolymph feeding and feeds on prey, uh, so it is fasting. Meanwhile, uh, the workers seldom perform uh, this larva hemolymph feeding, except uh, the cases when the colony is starving. Okay, you see, this is again very important information that uh, that uh, queens uh, consume eggs, this uh, eggs, not fertilized eggs, which uh, uh, this eggs produced by other workers, ant workers, or sucking blood from babies. But again, it's the sucking blood of babies. It's probably a part of the cast uh, creation. So if they suck more blood then the, uh, the larva it will be smaller and it will develop to smaller uh, size uh, and by minima or it is if it is not so in larva uh, grow longer and get into bigger size it can be a soldier dracula ants uh, ready uh, really feed on the blood of their own larva and uh, so and adult workers hunt prey for their larva to eat uh, and also they feed on hemolymph of the prey and later on they feed they uh, feed uh, on the larva body fluids okay so so you see they supply food for larva for own larva but they also uh, feed on the hemolymph of the larva mostly on the prey but also for, on the larva of the babies this unusual strategy of non-destructive cannibalism closes the loop of this interesting uh, food supply uh, among uh, the colony generations. In some species, the larva has uh, have special organs that ex exclude the hemolymph for adult ants. Okay, they even they like milking. The larva can can even like milk and produce this hemolymph uh, for uh, and then other work, working bees workers they leak and uh, they consume this uh, fluid in end predators the workers and the queens uh, or the queen only are incapable of the direct transfer of food between individuals within the colony and instead they consume the hemolymph of the larva and trophic eggs produced by other workers you see again what we see that uh, normally uh, the working bee, uh, working ants, they exchange fluids and uh, foragers bring some uh, uh, some fluids 
from outside to the nest and they exchange this uh, food, f f uh, these fluids between the other, uh, between the, all the nest colony. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes it happens so that even workers inside the, the nest, uh, including bees, of course, they are incapable to get food from other uh, foraging, uh, foragers. Instead, they consume the hemolymph of own baby. So, and because baby can eat uh, the insects and other solid food, or otherwise uh, some uh, workers produce trophic eggs, and also they consume this liquid from the eggs. Interesting. So Dracula ants live mostly in the tropics of Africa, Australia, and Asia, and spend most of their lives uh, in, uh, buried, uh, buried in the uh, tree trunks and, or underground. The colonies may contain as many as 10,000 workers and uh, some uh, winged, uh, winged uh, males and several wing, wingless queens. These ants are specialized, specialized predators on soil uh, serpent, uh, centipedes and, and other insects. Workers attack and kill them by stinging or uh, to carry them back to the nest. The centipedes are cut up or uh, must, mastific, masticated by the workers and uh, these workers uh, also feed on the, any hemolymph oozing from them and after which larvae are placed on the prey to feed. Okay, so to, to feed larvae. The queen feeds, as I said, exclusively by larvae hemolymph feeding. Okay. The workers may engage in this behavior in case of some uh, starvation. So it, it is not only the queen, but queen never use hemolymph from other sources, only on babies. Here's a picture how the Draco ants attacking a soil uh, centipede. Centipedes are the, the uh, poisonous insects, you know. And here, n n not the same uh, ants, uh, this I believe uh, the waver ants, which are very common in Asia, in, in Taiwan, for example, they are hunting for any kind of insects and bring these insects to the nest to feed the larva. The concentration of free amino acids in the insect hemolymph can be as high as 50 or 100 times uh, that of mammalian plasma. Other organic components in the hemolymph include carbohydrates such as inositol, sugar alcohol, gexosamines, and manitol, glycerol, and also various uh, Krebs cycle intermediates, uric acid, and soluble proteins. Free lipids are present also and used as fuel for, flu for flight. Content of saturated fatty acids exceeds, exceeded that of the unsaturated uh, fatty acids. So, okay, so it's again, saturated fatty acids are more than unsaturated fatty acids. Soluble proteins uh, include yolk proteins produced by female fat body. Several enzymes such as vitamins B1, B2, and C appear, appear uh, in the hemolymph. Okay, we see here larval hemolymph feeding in Draco ants. As I said, these Draco ants uh, inside the nest, they cannot exchange food with foragers. Instead, they uh, suck in blood, suck in hemolymph from own babies. And here we see that uh, some, uh, this indicate this uh, row places here, 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 it is special places. Uh, that uh, this uh, hemolymph taps of the uh, and uh, between uh, f that this is fourth and fifth uh, segments of the larva, so these are places where the hemolymph uh, is uh, taken from the larva. Uh, this is the queen feeding on the hemolymph of larva. So, okay, you see how it works. It is not destructive, they are not killing the, the babies. They just suck a little bit of, of the hemolymph. And I believe it is, I didn't find this information, but I believe that the more uh, the queen is sucking a hemolymph, the smaller will be the cast of the adult end. So like minima 
and so they uh, have smaller size just because and uh, the queen consumes too much of her hemolymph and therefore the body does not develop uh, to one, one, to larger size but again I, I didn't find this information in the publication I, I suspect that it, it is so but I don't know nutrition affects the level of juvenile uh, juvenile uh, hormone during a critical period of uh, soldier de determination in some this uh, ants uh, species low uh, juvenile uh, hormone levels lead to the development of a worker well nutrition nutrition larvae have higher uh, juvenile uh, hormone uh, levels and it leads to prolonged the growth of body and head of a soldier. Soldiers produce an inhibitory pheromone that blocks the effect of uh, juvenile hormone. Exogenous uh, uh, juvenile hormone applied to work in larva after the soldier critical period. So this was done in laboratory, of course, not uh, not uh, on existing, not uh, on the colony which is in the wild. So then this was experiment done and then uh, what is uh, happening, uh, this hormone uh, can extend the growth period and the result in, uh, in, in giant workers, not soldiers, giant workers, even of abnormally large size. The soldiers, uh, soldier inhibiting pheromone is a contact pheromone that functions to limit excessive production of soldiers in, the, in an ant, ant colony, you see here. We see here so big difference between the soldier and the working uh, working ants. Very big difference, and it depends on nutrition and level of the juvenile hormone. So again, nutrition, high nutrition, uh, produce results in higher level of juvenile hormone, and then it can uh, uh, this can can go to the soldier, the development of. of it, it, it leads to prolonged growth and large, large head of the ants, so the soldiers. But genetically, they are identical. Uh, normally, if nutrition is low, then uh, juvenile uh, hormone is low, and we have worker, working bees, working uh, ants, pardon, working ants like this. But in experiment, <laughs> this hormone was supplied extra to the larva. And then it is a result in prolonged growth, but instead of a uh, soldier, giant workers were produced. So the same like workers, uh, the, but big size, big size somehow. Okay. Again, interesting that uh, not only the, uh, I mean, nutrition, of course, it's important, but also hormones uh, and the regulation of the so hormones is by contact with soldiers. If there are too many soldiers in the colony then uh, they suppress uh, growth of the larva to soldier cast, cast. colonies of in, uh, fungus uh, growing ants uh, they have special name a time are among the most impressive animal phenomena uh, in the world they can uh, have nest volumes of thousand liters and may persist for decades and contain millions of ster sterile st sterile uh, workers which are normally the offspring of a single queen. The agricultural symbiosis with fungi uh, has allowed these ants to occupy previously inaccessible niches that have abundant food resources. The most derived uh, genera of the Italian uh, ants have become dominant uh, herbivores of the New World tropics. The fungus uh, the ants uh, uh, grew eventually became uh, reproductively isolated and co-evolved with the ants. Again, this uh, specialization started 150 million years ago, very long time ago. Then uh, they developed such kind of fungus which doesn't exist in the wild, but it is uh, only uh, only exists with inside the colony. Typically, one queen lives per colony. Every year after the colony is about three years old, the queen lays eggs of female and male elates, so this with wings. And uh, the reproductive ants that will pass uh, on the genes of the, of the queens. Before leaving the nest, uh, queens, this uh, load some, uh, this new queens, young queens, load some of the fungus mycelium into dorsal food porch. 
these winged uh, males and queens then take uh, their nuptial, nuptial, nuptial uh, flights to mate high in the air. After the mating flight, uh, queens cast off their wings and begin their descent into the ground. After sh uh, creating a narrow entrance and uh, digging 20-30 cm straight down, she creates a small, about 6 cm size chamber. Here, uh, she uh, spits out fungus and starts her colony garden. So we have here the, uh, this allied uh, winged uh, queen and, and, and king and working be working end, pardon, working end. After about a week of this underground growth, uh, so the, the uh, queen pull, uh, produce some eggs and the eggs develop to larva. And after about a week of this underground growth, workers are open the closed entrance and begin foraging, staying close to the nest. The fungus begins growing at much faster rate because uh, the workers foraging workers bring some pieces of uh, cellulose, or wood or leaves from outside to the nest. And from this point on, uh, the only work of the queen uh, does, uh, uh, what the, the only work the queen does is egg laying. Founding uh, queens rarely move for, to a single location, from a single location, which is typically in a centralized uh, fungal garden. Workers take their eggs and move them to the another uh, gardens, uh, fungal gardens. Difference is in size between the working crests begin to develop after a colony is well established. Task, uh, tasks in the colony are divided not only by the size of the workers, but their age too, like in uh, bees. So here we, we see how the colony begins. The founding queen uh, uh, produces eggs and larva is growing, but larva feeds on unfertilized egg. You see this little uh, small egg, yellow color. So the larva eat eggs. It is feeding on eggs. But then uh, first generation of the, the working, working ants produced and then colony gets established in time. Okay, first, foragers bring in and drop leaf fragments on the nest chamber floor. Workers that are, are usually slightly smaller clip these uh, pieces into segments that are about 1-2 millimeters across and the smaller ants then crush these fragments and mold them into dump pellets by, by adding fecal droplets and kneading them. They add, uh, then they add the pellets into the larger pile of other aprils and even smaller workers then, uh, then pluck loose strands of fungus uh, from dense uh, patches and plant them on the surface of the freshly uh, produced pile. The smallest uh, workers, the minimum, minimum uh, move uh, around and keep up the garden by delicately pruning, uh, pruning the piles with their antennas leaking the substances and plucking out the spores and, uh, and, and heap fire of the unwanted uh, mold species. Again, you see uh, that this minimum, minimums, uh, they take care of the uh, growing fungus. And even they produce some kind of antibiotic that, uh, to kill other, uh, other, uh, other type of fungus only, so that they really garden taken, uh, taking care, uh, care of the garden. But this is a foraging, foraging uh, work, workers. They are larger size, of course. They bring pieces of uh, leaves to the, to the nest. And here is the fungus garden of the leaf cutter ends. You see, we see this uh, very tiny uh, working, working ends and little bit larger working ends that brings the pieces of uh, leaves from outside and cut them to pieces and this minim, minims they take care of the fungus so fungus fortifications are collected and manipul manipulated by workers to feed larva larva seems to grow on uh, on all or nearly all fungus uh, whereas queens obtain their energy from 
trophic eggs produced by by uh, work uh, by females uh, by worker females some larger ones and also this larva hemolymph feeding adult ants uh, feed uh, mostly on plant sap uh, symbiotic fungus is represented only five percent uh, of the energy requirement ants are specialized in the degradation of all molecular weight substances uh, which are like oligosaccharides and heterocytes, whereas the fungus degrades structural polysaccharides of, of plants that are otherwise not digested by ants on their own. Larva degrade uh, starch, sucrose, maltose, and leave on it, and in certain uh, this other species, the fungus degrades the cellulose. Again, this very specialized fungus. Here we see how larva is feeding on this fungus, on, in the fungus garden. So they eat pieces of the fungus. Here, if we can see it. Okay. Okay, then, so it looks like development of larva to workers, soldiers, and elites, uh, uh, the wind uh, uh, queens and, and kings, depends on nutrition and hormones. Adult ants cannot eat solid food, as I said, including grits. So even if it is very small pieces of uh, organic, I mean, of plants, they cannot uh, swallow it. The ant larva can chew and process the solids. Uh, during foraging, workers uh, uh, collect fluids that are stored in the upper part of the digestive system, the crop, and uh, then uh, it it make uh, include sap from plants as well as hemolym from other insects. It depends on what, what how they if it is the uh, they preying on other insects, they can keep the sap uh, keep, keep this hemolym inside the inside the stomach inside the special uh, special crop size. And uh, upon returning to the nest, these workers uh, regurgitate re 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 so the uh, spitting out a portion of the stored food and pass it on to other workers. Forager ants bring protein-rich food, uh, like insects, to the colony where they feed it to the larva. It is not about garden uh, 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 keeping uh, ants, uh, but it's just. Uh, this uh, other ends. The queen in a developed con colony rely exclusively on larva hemolyph feeding. It is possible that larva hemolyph feeding functions as a filter, providing protection for the queen against toxins and parasites. It is important that the colony has the right number of each case. Cast it if uh, too many ants develop into soldiers, for example, the colony will starve. While a colony with too many uh, foragers cannot take care of its larva, and larva and gardens or larva mostly. So the uh, liquid hemolymph uh, feeding may also regulate number of workers. And so it's, I have suspicion that again, queen somehow regulate the number of the uh, workers and soldiers and, uh, and size of the workers, because if uh, it sucks more, Hemolymph, then the workers develop small. If it, if uh, she if, if there are so many uh, larvae and she cannot uh, consume so much uh, hemolymph, then uh, some number of soldiers will appear, etc. In colonies of the leaf cutting ants, small workers like minima usually care for the larva and the fungus uh, of the uh, the colony feeds on. So we see that again, uh, the even uh, working bees which are in nest can feed on larva. They are sucking uh, hemolymph from the larvas, larva and uh, from the larval body, and they are feeding not on it. So we get an energy, energy from this, not from foragers. But foragers, yeah, foragers they use uh, normally consume uh, sap of the plants when they cut leaves. Okay, here it's some picture, which is again not much related to the uh, leaf cutting uh, uh, ends, but yet, okay, interesting. So what we have, we have development of the larva, 
and uh, of course it de depends on genes, uh, but epigenetics actually. It depends on temperature and pheromones, and uh, of course it depends on amount of food. So what uh, what they have, it, it can be different. It can be in, in different uh, cascades. It may be different because uh, the uh, working be, working ants can uh, exchange saliva with uh, the larva or they are feeding on hemolymph and here the exchange of uh, of the saliva between the uh, forages and the nest uh, workers so okay uh, when adult ants feed larva mouse to mouse it also can happen and uh, the juvenile hormone and other signal molecules can be transferred okay that's you see it's a self-established uh, colony and uh, and uh, so evolutionary it, it develops so that the number of workers number of minima number of soldiers and queens is well regulated naturally what else we have to pay attention authors of this recent publication compared microbiomes of queens newly enclosed uh, enclosed uh, workers a brood uh, carriers and forages of the some small European ants and the, there were no large differences between the ant casts uh, and uh, but also, also queens uh, harbored more diverse microbial communities than workers however abnormal ab abdominal pardon abdominal uh, microbiomes uh, differ between colonies Interesting is that colonies with more diverse gut bacteria, uh, gut bacteria communities had produced more brood. Moreover, the queen's microbiome composition has uh, was linked to high and egg uh, production. So if it is more diverse, it is more high production. But again, remember that the queen in established colony, they feed on hemolymph of babies. They don't consume anything from outside. Antibiotic treatment of worker ants lead to a more aggressive behavior against nestmates, which in turn is correlated with a decrease in the abundance of two antifungal uh, comp compounds produced against fungus garden parasites. Also, ants feed with fecal uh, microbiote uh, aggressive uh, remodeling droplets from different colonies we are unusually aggressive to ants from uh, from the same com colony compared to the pairs fed by fecal droplets from the same colony. Obviously, there is a cover correlation between chemicals produced in guts and the presence of certain microbial uh, species in the microbiome, microbi microbial species in the microbiome. So, spe uh, specific scent. Stent uh, may affect nest mate recognition and division of labor. It's okay, it is not uh, related to longevity, but it shows importance of the microbiome. And again, uh, what is important, queens, queens don't uh, eat anything from outside, yet they have a similar microbiome, but e even more diverse. Even more diverse, which is again, in previous video I was indicating that in humans the diversity of the uh, microbiome gets uh, smaller and smaller with age while it is the best uh, and it is enriched by a friendly bacteria in the infants on toddlers. The resident mi microbes regulate insect nutrition by controlling the host plant specialization and immunity. It enhances the host fitness and performance by detoxifying uh, some toxins secreted by the predators and, uh, abstains, uh, and abstains them. Research of the insect-associated microbes uh, has revealed their potential to modulate insect brain function and ultimately control their behavior, including social interaction. And the review of the gut mi microbiota brain axis has now unraveled insects as cost effective potential model to study neurodegenerative disorders and behavior dysfunction in humans. Again, what we see the queen lives long and it is uh, sucking a hemolyph uh, from babies. 
This Hemba wife has very limited amount of sugars, very limited. Mostly this Hemba wife can, uh, can contain uh, proteins and, and lipids, mostly. So you can uh, make a conclusion what type of diet we have to follow if we, have to, if we want to live long. Meanwhile, workers and foragers, they uh, consume uh, plants, saps and with all toxins from plants, and they live short. They live short. So all plant-based plant food is actually potentially or really toxic. It's better to avoid it and to, to live on something which is uh, already detoxified, like eggs. Eggs, for example, it's a perfect example that uh, we can uh, feed, uh, uh, we can eat ourselves eggs and they have very low amount of toxins. And if our food will be restricted only to eggs, good quality eggs, yeah, then we live, we will live much longer. Of course, meat is also meat of the animals, also kind of uh, filtered food, uh, food with much less toxins. Toxins are produced by plants to protect themselves, to protect babies of the plants. So if you consume seeds, then you consume a lot of toxins okay, in your body. But some animals are evolutionarily adapted to feed on grains, like chicken. Chicken can detoxi detoxify own body and of course they detoxify eggs because eggs are filtered ma many times it, this is very very uh, pure food uh, especially if it is free range chicken and if they can uh, have uh, can stay on the sun in clean environment not in so big companies so i was uh, keeping uh, hens laying eggs and it was about 25 or 30 i don't remember for sure but more than 25 uh, 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 egg laying hens and this, they, they were free range. I was giving them very good food and I tried to detoxify the, the seeds by germinating the seeds. You know the germination of the seeds re remove toxins from them and then I was feeding them with this germinated uh, seeds, rice seeds. And they were producing more eggs. So they were producing up to five eggs a week. Instead, if you if you give them that not germinated rice, then produce only three eggs uh, per week. Because again, it is more hard work to detoxify the the seeds. And uh, then when I was eating these uh, free range eggs, they were very good for my health. And uh, next, uh, this which is maybe related to the ants, I was eating a lot of mushrooms. Mushrooms also kind of, uh, they are fruits, of course, and fruits, uh, these are not plants, fruits are normally uh, low in toxins, and also the, uh, the mushrooms, they grow on wood chips, not on uh, any kind of uh, grains or whatever, so they grow already on not very toxic substance and they uh, filter it further so that I can consume uh, the mushrooms such as and then it is filtered food, clean food, not exactly what uh, Queen is consuming but well it's not bad, it's not bad actually. So combination of eggs with mushrooms, yeah, it, it gave me so, so better health that all people were telling me that I'm looking very, very healthy. So it's like shining, skin was shining. Okay, now I, uh, I, I try uh, this uh, business, unfortunately, it doesn't work now because my wife didn't help me. But uh, I can buy uh, free range eggs and uh, I consume a lot of them and then I also uh, consume a lot of coconut oil, which is uh, not so high in toxins. And uh, also I take some meat, feel much better. Okay, queens that are found in, uh, that are found in colonies uh, get their nutrition at first from breaking uh, down their wind muscles uh, that, uh, that will never be used again. Uh, and when larva appears, when larva appear, the queen feeds them uh, with trophic eggs. 
she producing eggs, not fertilized eggs, and these eggs uh, larva eats. First generation of workers uh, have weaker bodies and small bodies uh, as uh, because often uh, uh, much smaller than subsequent workers as the queen can only provide a limited amount of food compared to that which uh, foraging workers can provide later. In established colony, larval uh, hemolyph feeding is the queen only way to obtain nutrients even when the captured prey centipedes or mealworms are available in the brood chamber. So again, I may speculate the difference in the diet of uh, queens and workers define longevity. If we consume filtered food like eggs, exclusively <laughs> we'll eat only eggs, uh, then uh, we'll stay much healthier because we are not getting toxins from outside. And then this is important. Okay, so I express my personal opinion. Please mind that I don't provide health consulting. Therefore, a visitor of my channel is advised to discuss the content of this video with his or her personal physician and only act on, upon the advice of professional medical expert. I am myself special. I never get in sick. I always uh, take care of my health. I never go to, to the medical professional, so I don't need uh, their help. And they probably hate me for this, for being too healthy. Okay, thank, thanks for your time uh, and, uh, and to watch the video and please comment, subscribe, like, ask, ask questions and share information. Have a wonderful day. Ciao.